Hi, I'm Jess, the designer behind Sally Tomato. Join me to create the ginger bag. I designed this bag for beginners. It's a medium-sized crossbody bag that is sure to become your go-to purse. In this video, I'll take you step-by-step -step to learn how to make the entire project. You'll learn how to stabilize fabrics, install a magnetic snap, how to use zippers by the yard to make a zipper pocket, tips for sewing with cork fabric, how to create an interior slip pocket, assemble darts to add depth to your bag, attach a flap closure, and make an adjustable strap. Be sure to purchase the pattern before taking this class. So grab your supplies and let's get started. You can enroll in this class on sallytomato.com. Included with your pattern are eight pattern pieces, and also listed on page one are some additional pieces that you need to cut out with your rotary cutter and cutting mat. To make it a little bit easier for you, I've created some pre-made labels found on page six, and you can cut these out and label the pieces that were rotary cut to help keep all of your pieces organized. So you'll simply cut out the pattern pieces and follow the instructions on each pattern piece for which materials to cut. So there is a little bit of a catch with the pattern pieces. For the front bottom panel I have created two pattern pieces. One is if you're using cork or vinyl and the other is if you're using cotton. So you'll only need one of two of the pattern pieces depending on which fabric you decide to use for your contrasting fabric. So I'm going to show you both variations in the video. For my contrast I'm going to use a black cork but then I'm also going to show you how to make the bag if you decide to use a cotton for the contrast. And the main difference is this indented area here is a little bit smaller because we need to finish this at raw edge off. However with the cork fabric we can just leave it raw. So this is prepared and we'll need to do one extra step to prepare the top edge of our cotton piece. And it's not hard, I'll show you how to do it either way that you decide. If you do decide to use cotton for your contrast fabric, there is one additional pattern piece that you'll need to cut and it is the facing for the cotton front bottom panel. And you'll only use this pattern piece if you decide to use cotton for the contrast and I have it all labeled on the pattern pieces for reference as well. Another tip is that some of the pattern pieces need to be cut on the fold. So I've already cut this pattern piece out and this particular piece needs to be cut on the fold. I have arrows pointing to the edge where your fold should be placed. So here I already have my cork panel already cut out if you are using cork fabric or vinyl, it can be difficult to cut that type of material on the fold. So to make it a little bit easier, I recommend to lay your pattern piece on your cork and trace around the outer edge of the pattern piece, but then also trace the folded edge. Then flip the pattern piece horizontally and trace its reflection to create one continuous piece. And just make sure that that original fold line that you marked is even with that straight edge of the pattern to make sure that you have an even reflection of the pattern piece. I have one last tip for cutting out pattern pieces. When you go to cut out your pattern pieces you're going to cut along the solid black lines. However, you also see a blue dashed line and this is for any fusible fleece that needs to be cut. And when you go to cut the fusible fleece you can either make another photocopy of this pattern or cut along the blue dash line and you'll use that blue dash line as a template to cut out your fusible fleece. So you'll cut along the solid black line up to the blue dash line along the blue dash line and then continue along the solid black line up to the next blue dash line and so on. And the reason being for that is you want your fusible fleece to be a little bit smaller than your contrast piece so that way it stays out of your seam allowance and it'll help reduce some of the bulk on your bag. Once you have all your pieces cut out we're ready to get started.
The first step in the instructions is to fuse the interfacing to the coordinating pieces. Whenever you're fusing interfacings or stabilizers, be sure to follow the manufacturer's instructions depending on the type of interfacing that you're using. So, you're going to fuse the interfacing to the wrong side of both exterior flat pieces. So here's what it should look like. So fuse to both exterior flaps, both exterior top panels, and your strap connectors piece. Now, if you decide to use cotton for your contrasting fabric, you'll also want to fuse interfacing to the wrong side of each of your bottom panels. After your interfacing is fused, now you'll fuse the fleece to the coordinating pieces. So you'll fuse the fleece to the wrong side of each coordinating piece and it'll go right on top of the interfacing that you've fused already. So you'll fuse one flat piece, both of your exterior top panels, and each of your contrast bottom panels no matter if you're using cotton fabric or cork or vinyl. And as you can see, as I talked about earlier, your fleece should be slightly smaller than your contrast because that will help keep bulk away from the seams. One tip for fusing fleece to cork or vinyl is to use a press cloth against the right side of the fabric and then steam the fusible fleece to the wrong side. And if you can't get the fleece to fuse to the wrong side or you're not comfortable with steaming the cork fabric or vinyl on your ironing board, you could always just do some top stitching along the sides and bottom edge to hold the fleece in place on your contrast bottom panels. I'm going to show you how to install one half of your magnetic snap onto our exterior flap with the fleece fused to the back side. We're going to insert the male half of the magnetic snap centered one inch up from the bottom edge. So one way to mark the placement is to take your flap and fold it in half and mark the center with your chalk and then you would take your ruler and measure up one inch from the center and that would be our placement. Another way to mark the placement would be to take your pattern piece and I've already marked the placement on the pattern piece in gray. So the arrow points to the center of the placement of the magnetic snap. So all you need to do if you'd like to try using the pattern piece is to fold the pattern piece in half and align it with one half of your flap and make sure the, the side edges are even. Then you're going to mark at that tip of the arrow where the center point is for your snap. Okay. Then you'll take one of your washers and center it so the hole is right over that placement mark. And you'll mark each of the slits in the washer. And these two slits will be for the prongs on our magnetic snap. Next, you'll take your seam ripper and we're going to cut a slit at each of the marks that we just made. So only cut about an eighth of an inch, just enough for the prongs to poke through. Then you'll take the male half that has a bump in the middle and poke it through your fabric. Then flip over to the wrong side and take one of your washers and place it over the back side of the prongs and then you'll fold the prongs away from the center. And it's that simple. So you have one half of your snap installed and the other half will be installed the same way but we're going to save that for the next step of the instructions. And a tip to help protect your fabric from the back side of the snap is to take a scrap of your fusible interfacing and cover the back side of the snap and then you take this over to your iron and fuse it in place. 
So that way you don't have to worry about the metal prongs rubbing against the back side of your fabric. So you can do that if you'd like. Then you're going to take your other exterior flat piece and this piece just has the interfacing on the back side and you'll place both of your flaps right sides together and you'll take this over to your sewing machine and sew them together along the sides and the bottom edge with a quarter inch seam allowance and leave the top edge unsewn so we can turn the flap right side out. I've added a few pins to hold the flap pieces in place and don't forget to backstitch at the beginning and the end. After you have your flap pieces sewn together, take your scissors and cut off the top corners and this will help reduce the bulk. And then also trim around the curved edges so that way the seam allowance is an eighth of an inch wide. Now we're going to turn the flap right side out through that unsewn top edge. And I'm going to use this turning tool and use the curved edge to help push out the seam so it's nice and flat. You can also use your fingers to roll the seam and help get it flatter. And then you'll take this over to your ironing board and give it a good press. And then top stitch around all sides of the flap with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So I'm going to use this really narrow foot to help me do my top stitching. I'm just going to follow my fabric along the edge of the foot and that'll allow for a really even eighth inch seam allowance all the way around the flap. If you don't have a narrow foot like this, you could also use a zipper foot or an applique foot to help you see the edge of the fabric a little bit better. It just depends on the type of sewing machine you have. So I'm going to go ahead and get this top stitched. And take your time as you sew around the curves. You can lift up the presser foot if needed to help readjust. Now take one of your exterior top panel pieces and we're going to insert the female half of the magnetic snap centered an inch and a half up from the bottom edge. So you can use your preferred method for marking. Again, I have the placement already marked on the pattern piece or you could just use your ruler to mark the placement. Then you'll take your washer and install the magnetic snap just as we did before. And then you can iron a scrap of interfacing to the wrong side of the snap if you'd like and set the top panel aside for now. If you're using cotton for the contrasting fabric, then we're going to need to finish off this top indented raw edge for our zipper. So you're going to take your front bottom panel and your facing and place them right sides together and align that indented section. And pin in place. Then you're going to take this over to your sewing machine and sew with a quarter inch just along the indented section. Now we're going to trim the seam allowance to an eighth of an inch wide and you can even take your scissors and make a small snip in each corner close to the stitches but not through them and that will help your facing lay flat. And then turn the facing to the wrong side and then take this over to your ironing board and give it a good press. And you can use your fingers to roll the seam to help the facing lay nice and flat against the wrong side. And that will finish off the raw edge of our front bottom panel. Now we're ready to start assembling the zipper pocket. So first you're going to take both of your zipper lining pieces 
and fold the long bottom edge a half inch to the wrong side and press that with your iron. Then we're going to start with the shorter piece, which is the lower zipper lining, and position it with the right side up and the folded edge on the bottom. Then you'll take your zipper with the right side up so that way it closes to the right. So here the zipper opens to the left. We want it so it closes to the right, like how I have it. Then you're going to place it right side up on top of the lower zipper lining so the top edges are even. And you're going to sew together along the top edge with the quarter inch seam allowance. So again, I'm going to be using this narrow foot. I recommend using a narrow foot or a zipper foot to sew the zipper in place. And you can pin the zipper to the zipper lining if you'd like, but I'm just going to align it as I sew. Next, you're going to press the lower zipper lining away from the zipper and make sure that you keep the zipper tape flat. So take this over to your ironing board and give it a good press. Then you're going to position the piece so the lower zipper lining is the wrong side up and the zipper is right side up on the top. Then you're going to center your front bottom panel right side up over the zipper lining piece. And make sure that the zipper pull is moved inside the indented section. And you'll want to keep it out of the way. And you're going to center it the best you can. So what I do is I kind of scoot the zipper on top and you could take your ruler and measure from the raw edge to the zipper to see, to make sure that each side is equal distance. So that way you know that your zipper is center. But I'm just gonna eyeball it. And you'll want the top raw edges even as well. And I'm just gonna clip on the top edge so that way these stay together. And then you're gonna top stitch with an eighth inch seam allowance just on the indented area and you can move the zipper pull out of the way as you sew. And it'll be the same if you're doing, if you're using cork fabric for your contrast. So you'll just center your zipper and then clip the top edges. And then take this over to your sewing machine and do your top stitching. Now you're going to take your upper zipper lining piece and remember the bottom edge is the folded edge and you're going to have the right side up and take your front bottom panel and place it on top of the zipper lining. And you're going to want to align the sides and the bottom edge and the top edge with the lower zipper lining that's already attached. And I find it's easiest to have it flipped over to the wrong side to see, to make sure that you have it lined up. And I'm just going to add some pins along the top edge. And then you're going to take this over to your sewing machine and top stitch the zipper lining in place along the top edge and you're going to start and stop at your previous top stitching. Then you're going to turn the front bottom panel away and you're going to sew each of the zipper lining pieces together along each side edge with a quarter inch seam allowance. And you'll leave the bottom edge of the pocket unsewn and this will be used for turning the bag right side out later on. So unzip your zipper and you can set this aside for now. The next step is to assemble and attach the lining pocket. So you have two lining pocket pieces and you're going to take them over to your ironing board and press the top straight edge a quarter inch to the wrong side on each piece. Okay, so I have each of my lining pocket pieces pressed. Now you're going to take each of the pieces 
and place them right sides together and pin in place. Then you'll take this over to the sewing machine and sew the two pocket pieces together with a quarter inch seam allowance along the sides and the bottom edge and make sure you leave the top edge unsewn for turning later. After sewing, you're going to turn the pocket right side out through that unsewn edge and I'm going to use my turning tool again to help smooth out the curves. Then take this over to your ironing board and give it a good press. Again, you can roll the seams to help make them flat. And then you're going to top stitch along the top edge with an eighth inch seam allowance. Now we're ready to attach the pocket to the lining piece. So I'm going to fold my lining in half to mark the center. I'm just going to mark with an air erasable pen. And then I'm going to measure down three and a half inches. And make a mark. Then I'm going to take my pocket and align that top straight, ed straight edge, even with that mark I just made. And it's a good idea to find the center of this as well. Make sure everything is centered. I'm just going to eyeball it. And then I'm going to take it over to my sewing machine and top stitch the sides and bottom edge with an eighth inch seam allowance. You can pin the pocket to the lining to hold it in place, or you could even use a double-sided basting tape along the outer edges to adhere it to the lining so it doesn't shift while we sew. Now I'm going to show you how to create the darts. I'm going to start with the back bottom panel and with right sides together you're going to match the adjacent straight edges of one of the darts. So you'll line up those raw edges and clip in place and you're going to take this over to your sewing machine and sew from the raw edge all the way to the fold with a quarter inch seam allowance. And if it's easier for you, you can take your ruler and measure in a quarter of an inch and then mark so you know how far you need to sew and make sure that you keep that quarter inch seam allowance all the way to the fold. So after you have that one sewn, then you'll repeat for the opposite side to create the remaining dart on the back bottom panel. Then you'll repeat to create the darts on the front bottom panel and both of the lining panels. One tip for when you sew the front bottom panel is to move the zipper pocket out of the way just to make sure that the pocket doesn't get caught in the seam. To make the strap connectors, you're going to take your strap connectors piece and with wrong sides together, fold each of the link edges, which are the longer edge, to the center and take this over to your ironing board and press. Now you're going to fold the piece in half with the raw edges on the inside and press again. Then you'll take this over to your sewing machine and top stitch each of the length edges with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. After top stitching, fold the connector in half and cut along the fold to create two two inch pieces for your strap connectors. Then you're going to slide one D-ring over the end of the connector and fold it in half and align the raw edges. And for now I'm just going to put a clip in place and then you'll do the same thing for the other D-ring and connector. Then you're going to take one of your top panel pieces and to make this a little bit easier to position the connectors, I'm going to take my ruler and measure one inch down from each side and make a mark. Then 
Then I'm going to put one connector on each side of the bag and the top edge of the connector should extend about a quarter inch beyond the raw edge. And I'm just going to clip it to the top panel. And the D-ring should be facing the inside of the top panel. Then you'll take this over to your sewing machine and top stitch each of the connectors in place. One tip for sewing on the strap connectors is to position your needle in the middle of the connector to start. And then start by back stitching. And then sew forward. And I like to back stitch once more just for reinforcement. And the purpose of that is to keep the folded edges aligned. If you were to start at the folded edge and sew forward, your strap connector piece might start to shift on you and wouldn't keep those folds even. So I like to start in the middle and then back stitch and then sew forward. And then you repeat for the other side. The next step is to assemble our exterior. Our bag is really coming together, so it's exciting to see that we're almost done. So you're going to take your top panel with the magnetic snap attached, and then you'll take your front bottom panel, and you're going to align the bottom edge of the top panel and the top edge of the bottom panel with right sides together. And make sure that your zipper pull is out of the way, and you're going to center your top panel on the bottom panel and you're going to sew these together with 3 8 inch seam allowance. So I've sewn my seam. Now I'm going to press the top panel up away from the zipper and the seam will be towards the top panel. So you'll take this over to your iron and give it a really good press. Then you'll top stitch the seam with an eighth inch seam allowance all the way across. Then you'll repeat the same steps to attach the remaining top panel to the back bottom panel. Next is to attach the flap to the back side of the bag. So I'm going to fold each of these pieces in half to mark the center. Then take a ruler and measure down one inch from the top edge. I'm just going to mark across. Then position the flap with the magnetic snap side up and the raw edge towards the top and align your center points and make sure your raw edge is even with that line that we just marked. Then you'll take this to your sewing machine and top stitch the raw edge of the flap in place with a quarter inch seam allowance. And I'm just going to hold the flap in place as I sew but you could certainly add some basting tape to the underside to hold it in place or use pins. Then fold the flap up and take it over to the iron and give it a good press. Now top stitch the flap 1 8 inch and 3 8 inch from the seam. Next you'll unzip the zipper and that will prepare us for turning our bag right side out later. And then you'll fold the flap down towards the bottom of the bag. Then you'll take the front and place it right sides together with the back. Make sure your D-rings are towards the inside. And you're gonna want you're gonna want to align the seams on the sides. Make sure all your raw edges are even, and you'll also want to align the darts. And one tip is to press the seam allowance of the darts in opposite directions so they nest together and lie a little flatter. That way you don't have a bump in your seam and there's less bulk in your seam. So go ahead and put a clip at each of the darts. And then you'll continue clipping around the rest of your bag. Now you're going to sew the front and back together along the sides and bottom curve with a quarter inch seam allowance. 
and just make sure you're conscious of your D-rings as you sew. After you're done sewing, you'll leave the assembled exterior wrong side out. To assemble the lining, you'll take both of your lining pieces and place them right sides together and you'll align all the side edges and make sure you align your darts and nest the seams just as before. And you'll continue pinning all the way around. And one tip to help your lining fit better inside your bag is to start by sewing at the top edge with a quarter inch seam allowance and then you're going to gradually increase your seam allowance to 3 8 inch and you'll continue with 3 8 inch around the bottom curves and then as you reach the opposite top edge you're going to slowly decrease your seam allowance back to a quarter inch. That way when we go to sew the top seam our lining will be the perfect size to fit on the top edge. However, the bottom of our lining will be just a little bit smaller so it'll fit better inside our bag and we won't have that sagginess of the lining inside our bag. And what's neat is this technique works for almost any bag pattern. So if you're making a bag and you don't want a saggy lining, you can always increase the seam allowance as you sew the bottom edges just a little bit so that way it fits a little bit more snug inside your bag. So once you have the side seams of your lining sewn, then trim the seam allowance to a quarter inch wide all the way around and then you can turn your lining right side out. Now your bag is almost done, there's just a few more steps and your bag is assembled. With right sides together, you're going to put the lining inside of your exterior and you're going to align the side seams and the top edges and clip them together. And now you'll take this over to your sewing machine and sew along the top edge with a quarter inch seam allowance. So we're going to turn the bag right side out through the unsewn edge in the zipper lining. So the zipper should be unzipped so you can pull the bag right side out through the hole. So once you have your bag turned right side out, you can align the bottom edges of the zipper lining and you can hand sew them closed or take this over to your sewing machine and top stitch with an eighth inch seam allowance. Then you'll tuck the zipper lining into your bag after you sew that and you can zip the zipper closed. Then push the lining down into the exterior and you can roll the top seam with your fingers to get it nice and flat and even. And you'll do that all the way around the top edge. And then you'll take this to your sewing machine and top stitch the top edge with an eighth inch seam allowance. Make sure that the flap is down out of the way for your top stitching. The final section in the instructions is to create the crossbody strap. This piece is out of our cork fabric and we need to piece the cork to make one long strap. So to do that, you're going to place the cork fabric right sides together, perpendicular to each other. So you'll have a little bit of overlap, about a quarter of an inch on both sides. And you're gonna take this over to the sewing machine and sew a diagonal line from this upper left corner down to the lower right corner. Now we have one long cork fabric strap. Next we're going to fold the strap in half with wrong sides together and line up the raw edges. And you're gonna top stitch with an eighth inch along the raw edge and also an eighth inch along the folded edge. So do the raw edges first so it keeps the strap folded along the entire length of the strap and then go back and top stitch along the fold. And you can use wonder clips or some double sided basting tape to hold this together. I'm just going to fold it and hold it as I sew. The next step after top stitching is to attach the slider buckle. So our hardware that we have left are two swivel hooks and one slider buckle. So the right side of the slider buckle should be face up. The wrong side you can see 
the center bar was folded to the back, so that's considered the wrong side. So the smooth side is the right side. So have the smooth side face up and take one end of your strap and you're gonna thread it through the buckle going underneath, over the center bar, and back down. So this is what it'll look like on the front and the back. Then you're gonna fold this raw end. So from the fold to the raw end measures about an inch and a quarter. And then you're gonna take this over to your sewing machine and top stitch the raw end in place with one eighth of an inch and also a quarter of an inch. So I usually do two lines of top stitching. Some people like to do a box with an X in the middle for reinforcement, it's up to you. Just as long as you top stitch the end of the strap to itself. Now you're gonna take the strap so the wrong side is face up and the wrong side is the side that you folded the strap to so it shows the raw edge. So take your thumb and have it on the wrong side and make sure the strap doesn't get twisted and go all the way to the end of the strap that doesn't have any hardware on it. Then you're gonna take a swivel hook and you're gonna have the hook side down and you're gonna thread it through the swivel and you're gonna slide the swivel so it's closer to the slider buckle. So just make sure that everything isn't twisted so you should have the raw edge showing here and the swivel hook part towards the right side like this. Okay. Then just make sure that the strap isn't twisted again and you're going to guide the raw end through the slider buckle and again you're going to go from the underside back over that center bar and down the opposite side. Okay, so here's what it looks like so far. So that enclosed our raw edge and make sure that nothing is twisted. Looks good. And then on this raw end, we can move the slider buckle out of the way a little bit more. And now we're going to add the other swivel. So now we have the buckle side up. This is the underside. And this time you're gonna have the hook part towards the top, towards the right side. And then you're going to fold the raw end so it measures about an inch and a quarter from the fold to the raw end. And again, you'll top stitch the end of the strap in place. So once you have that done, you can clip each of the swivel hooks to each of the D-rings on the sides of your bag and your new purse is ready to use. If you have any questions, I'm here to help. So please just ask. Also, I would love to see your completed project. Be sure to tag me on social media.